Hi and welcome to my channel, Selena Styles Designs. My name is Selena Michelle and I'm an interior designer and stylist based in Sydney. Over the last few months I've actually been refinishing furniture pieces from my apartment and today I wanted to share with you how I transform pieces that I love working on. So this one here is a classic console with really beautiful spindle details but today I want to try something a little bit different and go for maybe like a soft pastel tone um, with some really lovely mother of pearl hardware. So the first thing I'm going to do is change into my work uniform and set up my studio space. So let's get to it. Now I'm in my uniform, we can get started on our trash to treasure flip. Right now I'm just setting up my staging wall as this makes it a lot easier for me to photograph my pieces before I start. If you're interested in seeing how I made this studio wall, I'll link that video for you below. I always make sure that I clean my staging space, that way I can get some clean images and I can then share this onto socials. It's also a great reminder just to know what the piece looked like beforehand. Step number one is to sand the timber top down. I'm using an 80 grit sanding paper and because this is pine it is quite soft so I'm making sure to go quite slow and gentle over this console. Just to make sure I don't get any ring marks on the timber piece itself. Here I'm just showing you the top part that has been completely sanded. Sometimes some people just do the sanding on this zone here, but I like to make sure that I go down to the edge and the curves of the console itself. I feel like it actually adds a little bit more of an elevated look and it really makes the timber stand out. So when you're staining, you actually get the full texture and warmth and tone from the timber. Feel free to ask me any questions down below if you would like to know a bit more about this technique, but I will try and do a video um, sometime in the future for this, so stay tuned for that. So here you can see now what it looks like completely sanded on the edge, and I've been able to remove that notch detailing. I'm just continuing on and finishing up the rest of the sanding to the other side, and now moving on to the 240 grit. My favorite process in the refinishing is really highlighting the beautiful timber that has been hidden underneath. And here you can see the timber texture and tone has come out really nicely with all that sanding. So now it's time to move on to step two. Here I'm just using sugar soap and just wiping it all down and then letting it dry. And then once it's dry, we're ready to move on to our next step. Now we come to step three, the painting my favorite part. So for this console, I'm going to make up a custom color. I'm hoping to go for a soft pinky tone. So I do have two different chalk paints here. One is a pure white called Popcorn by Porter's Paint and the other one is Burmese Grey. When you are painting furniture, you do want to consider the strength of your color. By using a softer color, you have greater flexibility to work in a range of different styles and obviously if you're selling, different types of homes as well. Here you can see me using a smaller paintbrush and I love using this because I can actually cut in and get into the details without overloading my paintbrush with too much paint. So on this console I have two different surfaces. I've got the really detailed spindle legs and then I've got the flat front surfaces. I make sure that I use a thinner, finer brush in all these details and then I'll switch to my bigger paintbrush just for the coverage. Initially when I first started furniture painting, I did this all inside my apartment. I've got some great past videos, which I'll link down below, that I literally painted inside my apartment. One was in my bedroom, the other one was kind of in my living room. So you definitely can paint anywhere. Something that I've learned over time when working with chalk paint is to make sure that you really go quickly and don't go too slow and too heavy with the paint that you apply onto the furniture item because you can get drips and then if they dry, they get corky. You don't 
fill your brush with too much paint. If you do, you will get drip marks and a way to also then mitigate these drip marks is to just kind of brush really quickly into these curves and cracks. If you have straight lines, it's a lot easier of a process, but with something as detailed as these spindles, you want to go quickly with your brush strokes and then just to go around the corners and make sure that you're collecting any drip marks as they go. So one thing to consider is when you're working on furniture, you want to make sure that you have a comfortable working position uh, because you are doing this over an extended period of time. It can be really hard on your back. So just make sure you find a comfortable position to work from. With this spectacular sunset in the backdrop, I now can move on to step four, staining the timber. And this is where it really comes together now. So I'm using a Driftwood water-based stain and here I'm just lightly applying it on the raw timber and then I wipe away the excess with the cloth. Once I've wiped away the excess, I'm just going to let this dry overnight and then we can see what it looks like in the morning. So here we are the next morning and it's looking great. I'm moving on to step five and now using hemp oil to just protect this timber surface. It also lets the timber have a lovely matte sheen. So whilst this hemp oil is drying, we can move on to step six, the waxing. So this step is optional. I like to wax my furniture items if I am using a chalk paint, just as it allows an extra layer of protection. And as this is a high traffic furniture item, as it will generally be in a hallway, you can get people scuffing and maybe pets as well. The wax does help the paint last a bit longer and also gives a lovely matte sheen as well. With the wax now drying, we can move on to step seven, adding a new hardware. So here I'm just using a lovely floral mother of pearl hardware pool and with this furniture item now becoming more of a lilac it actually pairs really well with the colour tones that you can see inside this hardware and it adds such a beautiful detail and really glams up this otherwise more classic console. And now we get to the fun part, the styling. So here is my lilac Trash to treasure console makeover. I'm really happy with how this color has turned out. It's such an elegant, soft, subtle color, and it really highlights the beautiful details on these spindle legs. The warm driftwood timber stain also pairs beautifully well with this softer, cooler lilac tone. And finish off with the glam mother of pearl hardware. This piece is such a beauty. I'm so happy with how it turned out and I can't wait to see what the photos look like after I've done that staging. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun putting this together and painting this console. Um, I do love working on consoles. I think they're one of my favorite furniture pieces to refinish and flip. So this lilac color was a little bit different to my initial plan. I thought I'd be going for a bit more of a pastel pink tone, but you know what, when you're making custom colors, you never know, you can never predict what color will come out. So I actually really adore this lilac and I think it would look beautiful in a dresser or even a bedside pair with brass knobs and a bit of marble as well. So maybe next time I'll find a piece that I will do that color again in. So fingers crossed the ideal buyer finds this on Marketplace and is just the thing for them. Sometimes you just never know what colors will actually work. Um, so this one is a bit of an experiment for me. I've done mostly neutrals, so this is a bit of a different color tone um, in this piece, but I'm sure there'll be the right buyer for it. So if you love this video, please subscribe. I've got some great content coming up. I'd love to see you next time. Thanks.